Building codes require a level of protection between a garage and a residence. Learn all the codes about garage dwelling separation in this clip for my on-demand course, IRC Chapter 3, Fire in 302. Available only at buildingcodecollege.com. Now I'm going to talk about garage separation and fire spreading from a garage to the habitable space or living space within one dwelling unit. And I'll also cover the other applications where drywall is used to protect other elements within the dwelling. And it's important to distinguish that this protection is not an hour rated fire resistive assembly tested through one of these methods like we've been talking about so far. Section 308, 302.6 provides all the details for providing this gypsum separation. But looking at that section, we can see that it includes references to other tables and other sections as well. In simple terms, all that's required is a gypsum board separation between the garage and the habitable space, or residence. The code uses a few different terms, because it's not exactly the way it's written when you look at table 302.6. The details for separation speak to residents and attics, habitable rooms, and dwelling units, which can add to some misunderstanding. The level of protection differs depending on whether the garage is beside or below these different spaces. When the habitable space is above the garage, 5 8 inch Type X gypsum board is required for the separation, since the heat from a fire has a much more rapid effect on horizontal materials directly above a fire versus vertical materials to the side. So for all of the other protection locations, those in the vertical orientation, only half inch standard gypsum board is required. But don't miss the next part that states, or equivalent. Gypsum board is just the easy solution, the baseline to compare to. But in situations like this garage addition, there's no reason to require the brick veneer to be covered with drywall. Only the wood framing above the brick would need gypsum board, or equivalent. Now let's take a look at the different separation conditions in the table and what's required. <clears throat> On the other side of this wall is the residence, as referred to in that portion of the table. So half inch drywall is required on the walls separating the garage from the residence. There's habitable space above of the residence above the garage. And since fire and heat like to move upward, 5 8 inch type X drywall is required on the ceiling below that space above. And with this beam being part of that horizontal separation assembly, it should also be protected with 5 8 inch type X. The post in the wall is a supporting structure to the horizontal separation, so it has to be protected, but only with half-inch drywall. Now is where things are going to get a little tricky. There were trusses over this portion of the garage running in this direction, so there was no way to get the drywall protection up the side of the second floor wall within these trusses. That meant that this portion had to be drywalled below. But what thickness? This situation isn't exactly described in the words of the book. The ceiling receives more heat in a fire, so that's kind of the point. So 5 8 type X is the most appropriate interpretation here. And now what's supporting that? Well, that's this wall, so it needs to be protected with half inch drywall. And so you realize the only part of this garage not drywalled is because it's the only part not required by code to be drywalled. But this has everything to do with the design of this particular house. In this house, the garage was just off to the side, so half-inch drywall can just extend straight up the wall. This is a good time to point out that the attic spaces also have to be separated from the garage. Let me tell you this story about how drywall saved the majority of this house. This was after it was repaired, and this portion of the garage was completely rebuilt because it wasn't protected. 
Inside, you can see all the new wood material. This is the third car garage bay that wasn't protected and burned completely down. The portions painted white to inhibit smoke smell were protected with drywall, and they protected the house long enough for the fire department to arrive. On the other side, you can see the post that was protected in the unprotected wall, and the portion where the house begins on the other side of the wall. Again, this was protected. Drywall protection also applies to detached garages that are less than three feet from the dwelling unit. The inside of the garage must be drywalled, but not any perpendicular walls. Now, let's think about this. When we learned about fire separation distance between a dwelling and an accessory structure, there was no protection required. But then we learn of the specific hazards of a garage, more specific information. And so separation is required from the habitable spaces. And if we build an accessory structure that's a garage that's really close, we still have to separate it within three feet. But what if we build another accessory structure garage, but it's next to a garage, not the habitable parts of the house? Well, the code refers to garages and dwelling units. But if we work backwards, the new garage could be a connected garage addition and there wouldn't be any separation. But it looks too close to the property line on this side. So fire separation distance is back in play, but that's to protect the fire spreading to the neighboring building and through the community. So a garage addition to an attached garage would not require any added protection. So I think it's reasonable to not require added protection from a detached garage that's less than three feet from an attached garage. Is the garage part of the dwelling unit? This is the importance of interpretation of the code. It's critical to remember that the specific purpose for this protection is to protect the living spaces of the house from the garage. Section 302.6 also requires attachment of the gypsum board in accordance with Chapter 7, specifically Section 702.3.5. And this section references this table and another, but those details are beyond the scope of this course. But a gypsum board separation doesn't stop fire from going through openings for doors and penetrations through the material. And that's the next section I'm going to talk about, 302.5. Well, I hope that clip was helpful to you. For the full on-demand course, go to buildingcodecollege.com and click the link to the course catalog. Scroll down the list of courses until you find IRC Chapter 3, The Human Element. You can watch the first course video by simply clicking the thumbnail image. For four months of 24-7 access to the full three-hour ICC-approved course, it's only $45 and a few clicks away. But you can get 10% off any enrollment using the coupon code YouTube.